So we have been speaking about uh, general, uh, let's say, terms of, of computer security, and then we, have, we are speaking about what is the scope of assets, then classifying those. Why do we classify those? Then why do we class? Why do we do that? Because they are vulnerable. How to classify vulnerabilities? And then because assets are vulnerable, we have to implement countermeasures. And then how do we um, um, classify countermeasures? Now let's speak about network security design principles, a couple of them in general. And the top, the, the top design principle of a network security, it is going to be not firewalls, not technical, not you know specific systems, but it's going to be the security policy. Because it doesn't matter you know what kind of security tools you have, in place in order to provide countermeasures against specific attacks. As long if you don't have a policy which both tells the uh, IT employees how to configure and how to document system changes, so those are trackable. So an, an admin has to be the there has, there has to be a specific policy for each action that somebody takes on a system. Like when you configure, let's say, a firewall rule, there has to be a policy for that. How do you do it? Do you provide a description of the firewall rule? Yes or no. Do you, or do you then, after the firewall rule has been configured, do you uh, follow up with the owners of the systems to see if the firewall rule has done its job? Yes or no. Do you, lo do you watch the firewall logs to see if there's any traffic back and forward with uh, ha uh, ha going through that new firewall hole that you open up? Do you follow up to see if users are actually sending appropriate traffic as they are should uh, they, as they should be sending in there. Likewise, on the end system, if you if you speak about the regular employees, then how can you possibly uh, how can a user behave appropriate if the user has not been trained and instructed how uh, uh, on how the user ca should use the system uh, correctly, or how can you uh, how can a user know what's allowed and what's not disallowed? Like, for example, how can a user know not to send a specific document, you know, out to a friend on the internet if that document, if he was not somehow being told that that document is a, a classified asset? So if for whatever reason the user got their hands on, the, on that document, he may accidentally leak that document out of the company because he was not aware that's a classified document, right? Because a user is not aware of what is important to a company or not. And even if a user should be aware, in network security, we don't assume things. So we just force users and employees to behave in a specific way. We just we allow them to have access to specific network resources in specific ways. We force the, uh, the security and the IT employees to configure the devices and monitor them in a specific way and to, um, and to document the changes in a specific way. We don't assume they're going to do it because some people are no, more knowledgeable than other people. Some people are by default, let's say, good people. Other people are bad people. You know, each of them follows different scopes in there. So that's how we need a common understanding of how to do things and how to behave while in the network. And that's going to be the security policy. Based on a security policy, based on that, in the security policy, actually, you, act, you also um, uh, define the assets. You also define, uh, basically, you, at the basic level, you define the assets, vulnerabilities, optional countermeasures, and then you have attached to the, network, to the security policies specific documents for specific use cases, for specific assets, and specific countermeasures. It's, it all has to be documented in the security policy. If that's missing, then basically it, it's chaos. You cannot expect things to work in there. And unfortunately, only large companies are doing this. Uh, most small companies and even medium companies, they just you know, put countermeasures in place 
without doing the risk analysis and without doing the network without implementing a security policy so as i saying, we have technical policies so which means of which was going to be a guide for uh, employees to properly configure the network change the network configuration and adapt the network configuration monitor the network log the network and respond to attacks and then we have user policies which are going to guide the users on how what are they allowed to do and how should they use different systems and for which purposes there's going to be defense in depth for example and the the next big concept is defense in depth which does not mean redundancy like you're going to go ahead and deploy three level of firewalls but it means a layered approach so defense in depth for example if you look at the diagram in here it means that again if this is your border network and this is the land side likewise LAN and this is the internet side then defense in network it means that as traffic comes in your network from the internet so as traffic flows from from the internet to your network and router 4 is your internet gateway you're gonna have a basic level of security on router 4 so a first traffic scrubbing happens on router 4 then traffic allowed by router 4 is going to be reaching the firewall which is going to do all kind of inspections option application inspection and all kinds of security enforcements to not only allow or disallow the traffic but also ensure that what the user is trying to send in the network it's not a malicious traffic then as traffic is routed in the network you may go through a IPS for example like instead of router 2 you may have an IPS system which you're going to speak about as well which, which is going to further inspect the traffic for anomalies or for specific attacks and then as traffic is being further routed to the server you may have in front of the server what is called a web application firewall which basically is a very specific firewall aimed to guard against very specific attacks for specific applications like if the server is a HTTP server then that's gonna be a web ap application firewall to defense against the different uh, variations of HTTP based attacks and then finally the traffic if it if it passes all of the security levels it reaches the server where even in there you're gonna have a lot of endpoint level security so some kind of security level deployed at the endpoint why is that endpoint security because whatever the attacker is sending towards the server in some cases only once the server opens the payload of the packet only at that point can 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 the server assess the impact of the payload on its services so having other kind of security uh, implement security tools implemented at the server level then when the server receives the packet and opened up opens up the payload those systems on the endpoint can actually identify suspicious behavior or unexpected results as a result of opening that packet and then ca they can take action so this is defense in depth where it, where it defi where you, you where you inspect the uh, uh, session from point A to point B in different places of the network but with different scopes. So defense in depth doesn't mean that in the transit path of a packet between point A and point B you end up implementing like five layers of firewalls from different vendors all of them doing the same thing layer 3 security so basic access control and application security so application inspection that's not defense in depth that's not a concept which is called uh, which is basically called um, doesn't have a name so when you want to deploy multiple layers of security of for, for the same of the same solution that's not defense in depth that's optional and it, it happens 
only in um, it happens on a lot of companies but only uh, for traffic f flowing from the internet and only from the file point of view so because most of the attacks are being remotely done from the internet and because a lot of uh, vendors have their own you know weaknesses system weaknesses and not all vendors uh, let's say achieve the lev the same level of security uh, for the same technologies. Like if you take Cisco's firewall and then Palo Alto's firewall and Fortinet's firewall, each of them are better at specific uh, features that the firewall uh, offers. So that and each of them ha ha and each of them has uh, it its own vulnerabilities. So in that use case, because most of the malicious, uh, most of the attacks are happening from the internet, and because you want to be able to um, properly inspect traffic coming from the internet, then in that use case, you're going to end up de deploying, in general, two layers of files from the internet towards your network from different vendors. Like in our use case in here, you're going to end up putting... Uh, this is going to be level of one, level one of firewall, which can be Cisco, for example. Level one of firewall, which, which is going to be, let's say, Cisco. And traffic passing that firewall is going to further be inspected by level two of firewall. So not a firewall. Level two of firewall, which is going to be whatever the company is, X, Y, Z, right? But other than this, uh, this exception, where you're going to deploy the same technology but for different vendors in your defense in depth in your in, in your defense in depth strategy then otherwise defense in depth means providing different level of securities uh, on different locations of the network for different scopes um, within a transit within a packet transit from point A to point B as we uh, as we showed before and then we have what is called network segmentation, which is grouping. Uh, I, this, this is going to also greatly help if the assets have been properly identified. So network segmentation means grouping assets of same type of value or risk level into security zones. Like for example, in here, if let's say this is a firewall, and this server A data, which it's relies on server A, is being uh, is being uh, classified as confidential. And that server is in VLAN 94 as a network segment. So that means that that firewall from here has to provide a specific level of security for traffic flowing back and forward from and to that network segment so that means that you're never going to end up putting in the same network segment another server that holds data which is considered to be public because it doesn't make sense because if the security implement is done at the firewall level in here at router one at the firewall level most of the files cannot put, cannot offer intra VLAN security. So at that point, you have you you ended up with one public, one asset classified as public, and one asset classified as confidential within the same network segment. Which means it doesn't make sense to provide the same level of security for both assets. So that's why you're never going. You you should ideally never end up in this design use case of having assets of different uh, value to the company within the same network segment. Because in here you're going to end up either providing the same level of security. Uh, which is going to be like for the confidential data. So you spend that, spend a lot of resources and money to provide a high level of security to an asset which is which is classified as public. That's one use case. Or the other use case is you end up providing a lesser, uh, uh, a lower level of security 
which is adequate for the public level of, of, of assets, which means you leave the confidential data to a, a higher risk level because you don't provide adequate security measures in there. So either way, you cannot satisfy board requirements. That's why this is not something that should, should happen in general. That's why you have network segmentation available, which is being done through a lot of, a lot of methods. You can do uh, layer tree segmentation via VLANs, and then you can do VLAN segmentation via private VLANs or access lists, or there are a lot of uh, or there are other mechanisms to make sure you also provide intra-VLAN security, not only inter-VLAN security.